Nithin Andam, welcome to Nithin TV News for 2012. The year of meditation and cosmic partying. The kind that doesn't do damage to our bodies. Now for today's headlines. Morning satsang from the Swamiji. Karnataka state government returns Bidhidi Ashram properties. Lenin repeats stale allegations against Nityananda. Swamiji's interview with the Telegraph. Inner Awakening update. Toronto Kailasam Temple's first anniversary is July 14th. Enlight weight loss and wellness retreat updates from Sedona, Arizona. Now for today's top stories. Morning satsang from the Swamiji. This morning saw 930 places with 41 two-way connections from 237 cities in 27 countries. Join Nityananda TV for 110 minutes of divine meditation with the avatar Paramahamsa Nityananda. He spoke, the most precious antique of India is enlightenment. I am not smuggling it out of India, I am sharing it with the whole world. I am growing it in India and sharing that same enlightenment with the whole world. My organization does only one thing, sharing enlightenment, nothing else. As an enlightened being from the Hindu tradition, no Indian media is going to praise me. Do not expect truth, praise, good word, or even any decent word from the media about us. Still, India does not have a single Vedic university. Not a single Indian media reported Maharishi Mahesh Yogi leaving the body. How many times do you touch the feet of the person abusing you? How do you stretch forward looking for healing? Do you touch the feet with devotion before giving a letter of complaint? and then touch the feet after giving that letter? How many years do you stay around volunteering independently for someone who is abusing you? I respect the judiciary. I trust the legal system. That's why I haven't spoken even a single word about this even after the charge sheet was filed, but now it is my very survival need. There is no limit for the wild imagination of irresponsible media. The number of minutes you are not abused, you should take it as though you are praised. Satya Sai Baba gave water to two districts, and the media doesn't say anything about it. If someone can hypnotize or mesmerize lakhs of devotees all over the world, then he must be incarnation. The irresponsible media does not bother about truth. And to the whole world, be honest to your capacity. Be truthful to your capacity. Go on expressing your maximum possible capacity. I am removing the word productivity from our dictionary. It is not enough as it is based on society. Being honest to your capacity is based on your self-realization, your honest growth. I am turning all the attention inside. Be true to your core. No more measured by productivity. Are you true to your possibility, to your capacity? Are you true to you? Let you be true to you, that's all. And one more person was initiated into the 11 days without thirst nor hunger as Paramahamsa Nityananda continues conducting the third level of the Nirahara Samyama for healing all devotees of harmful and deep-seated food-related patterns. See nityananda.org slash news for Janishree TV interviews with ashramites. Karnataka state government returns Bidhidi ashram properties. With the Karnataka government voluntarily handing back the control of the Bidhidi Nityananda Dhyanapitam to the ashram authorities, the writ petition challenging the seizure has been disposed of by the Karnataka High Court. Nityananda Dhyanapitam can, however, file another writ challenging the cause and legality of the seizure itself. However, as the property was handed back voluntarily, and since the government itself has undergone a change, the ashram has decided not to pursue this matter further. Lenin repeats stale allegations against Nityananda. Bididi, the 9th of July 2012. In a faltering bid to bring up some more allegations against Nityananda, 
Lenin Karupin held a press meet in Bangalore on the 7th of July where he accused Nityananda and his family of running a multi-crore import and export business of metal idols in the name of non-profit organization. It may be recalled that the same allegation was made in media by Lenin in 2010, though he has been unwilling to come forward and make an official complaint to date. The customs officials who investigated the allegation dismissed the issue after it was conclusively proved that no illegal acts were taking place. Therefore, as Lenin himself admitted during the press meet, no action was taken by the authorities on his complaint. Swamiji's interview with the Telegraph. See nityananda.org slash news for a recent interview Paramahamsa Nityananda granted to Smitha Verma from Calcutta's The Telegraph. An overall smooth piece, although misleading in parts. So for clarification, of course the infamous video of March 2010 has now been shown fabricated by at least four professionals in fields directly related to audio and video forensics. Go to youtube.com slash lifeless foundation and search Joe Report and Edward Video to see the five videos. And it must be said that in the case of the three arrests, of which Verma writes, the 53 days in custody was in itself unfounded as out of hundreds of thousands of charges laid similar to this, the one against Paramahamsa Nityananda was the only one left blank without a name leading to the mystery of exactly who is a victim and who is a complainant. How much water does a legal charge sheet hold that has no named victim nor complainant, no witnesses and no proof even after two and a half years? None actually. The second of mentioned arrests was for disturbing the peace. The peace disturbed was as a result of members of the press entering the Bidhidi Ashram for a press conference under false pretenses and engaging in the again illegal act of attempting to serve a legal summons, something that is clearly and widely well known as allowed under Indian law only by specifically qualified members of related legal professions, following which the news worker and associated company caused a ruckus in refusing to leave private property entered illegally and proceeded to return after several hours with a raging mob of angry men. This group then returned the following day to again sneak into a press conference and assault sannyasis and sannyasinis men and women, mothers and fathers of the ashram in the presence of young children using implements such as chairs, metal poles, rocks, fists, feet, sticks, broken glass, boxes and other materials. One man received serious head injuries in his own home yet somehow this is seen as Paramahamsa Nityananda disturbing the peace and there was nowhere near anything resembling an assault on any member of the press during the press meet by Paramahamsa Nityananda as is alluded through Verma's article as hundreds of witnesses and video footage attests Paramahamsa Nityananda came nowhere within 20 feet of the law-breaking folks and in fact remained extraordinarily calm and even seated during the entire time. Lastly, the third arrest was as stated by authorities for the own protection of Paramahamsa Nityananda. Although we see he had been previously doing fine in working around the clock, spearheading the recent development and implementation of cleaning the areas around various temples, as well as massing volunteers from around the world to provide free food daily, as well as medical camps and spiritual and emotional support for thousands, it is clearly not Paramahamsa Nityananda that needs any healing as he has been healing thousands at least once if not several times per day through an absolute record-breaking number of programs which are, by the way, broadcast live on the internet which shows visually the thousands of devotees connecting daily. Furthermore, 
The 90,000 year old and oldest living tradition on the planet certainly cannot be called a cult, as is mentioned in the article. Certainly it is a culture, if not civilization, and much more. And producing anything like the leaders of Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, Vivekananda, Satya Sai Baba, and thousands of others, as compared to the baseball, hockey, football, and cricket stars of the rest of the globe, which is more a cult? The millions benefiting daily from the Vedic culture and civilization and the teachings of great leaders such as Paramahamsa Nityananda, or the hooligans and fighting fan clubs of football and other organizations that may at certain points be influenced to recklessly attack not only other sports fans, but possibly sadhus or sannyasis, or maybe even women and children, or at least their parents and the places where they live. These actions may include lawbreakers in their midst and possibly repeated threats to their mothers. Is this cult or culture? For the record, Paramahamsa Nityananda is the most accessible speaker in identifiable history. If you were recorded in thousands of discourses and thousands of hours spanning virtually every single day for years on end, speaking in front of millions of people with no script, no pauses, nor breaks, and yes, no planning, how would that turn out for you? Probably similar to this reader, not very good, and certainly not anything like the clarity, poignancy, and compassion giving direct solutions and healing to millions at the same time from Paramahamsa Nityananda. All it takes is using our vast addiction to film footages to click on a few links from youtube.com slash lifeless foundation and it is certainly obvious that any other person having their entire life activities recorded like this would be much further out in integrity as Paramahamsa Nityananda stands continuously untouched despite years and millions of dollars and hundreds of court filings that have all fallen false and absolutely baseless against him. The only thing found was an imitation tiger print cloth amongst his created organization that is healing millions, providing free food, accommodations, mental and emotional support, a livelihood, and of course miraculous daily healing including the ability to live energetically without food and water for weeks to thousands and discovering that his alleged expensive clothing is actually donated clothes. How many of us wear donated clothing happily? Thankfully and notably there were spaces between the paragraphs on the page of Smitha Verma's well-written article so we take those for pure praise. Thank you, Telegraph. This from the other side, the side selling nothing but gifting liberation, pure spiritual strength exporting from India to the whole world for free from Paramahamsa Nityananda. Along with free food, school supplies, reading glasses, prosthetic limbs, medical care, wheelchairs, meditation programs, life solutions, hundreds of free books online, free daily healing and counseling, free spiritual and temple services, free time-tested ancient truths reviewed and updated for modern living on topics such as parenting, as well as cyclone relief and more. This from the side of Paramahamsa Nityananda. Inner Awakening continues as its participants had previously participated in Maheshwara Puja with Swamiji, including their ceremony and wonderfully beautiful and traditional lunch with Swamiji himself. Today continued with the Inner Awakening sessions on relationships as participants continued cleansing their inner space of limiting memories and the leftover pieces of experience including samskaras that inhibit full expression. Tirukayanam the wedding ceremony with Ananeshwara and Ananeshwari was also conducted by Swamiji and attended by Inner Awakening participants.
And Toronto Kailasam Temple in Canada celebrates their first anniversary, Saturday, July 14th. You are blissfully invited to attend the first anniversary celebrations on Saturday, July 14th, beginning with a 6.30 a.m. procession and 7 a.m. Guru Oma, followed as 9 a.m. Kumbhabi Shekam, 12 p.m. Darshan and Lunch, 1 p.m. Nvidyalaya Performance, 2 p.m. Matinee, 5 p.m. Cultural Event, 6.30 p.m. Maha Arti and Naivedyam, 7.30 p.m. Dinner, 8.30 p.m. Peace Meditation, and 9.30 p.m. Pratyakshapada Puja, live from India with Paramahamsa Nityananda, number 10 at 1960 Ellesmere Road. And we have Enlight Weight Loss and Wellness Retreat updates from Sedona, Arizona. And that's all from Nityananda TV News for now. Thank you for joining us and let us end our news with a bliss dose from the Avatar. Being honest to your capacity is based on your self-realization, your honest growth. I am turning all the attention inside. Be true to your core. No more measured by productivity. Are you true to your possibility, to your capacity? Are you true to you? Let you be true to you. That's all. We'll see you next time on Nityananda TV News. Nityanandam.